Hey, what's going on, Internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So, today we have a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, and I will be going through basically every tool, or most of the tools in DaVinci Resolve um, for color grading and color correcting your clips. So, a lot of awesome techniques in here. So, if you're new to DaVinci Resolve, or if you've been using it for a little bit, this tutorial will kind of go through everything that you need to do proper color correction in DaVinci Resolve. I was going to do a speed grade tutorial, uh, but I just learned that Adobe does not, it looks like Adobe is not going to continue speed grade um, and they're going to integrate that right into Premiere. So uh, I think DaVinci Resolve is going to be the dominant mainstream color grading program on the market right now. I mean, it really is. So DaVinci Resolve has a free version called the Light version. So if you're not using uh, DaVinci Resolve to color grade and color correct your footage with, be sure to download it off of blackmagicdesign.com. Uh, so basically, um, we're going to go right to the color tab, and this is kind of you know what our final look is going to look like. Um, this is about the nodes that we're going to use, but we're going to explore just about every parameter that DaVinci has to offer. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of reset these. So we can start from scratch. So uh, there's a couple of concepts here. So if we go ahead and go all the way to the right here where the camera icon is, we can see uh, that I shot this in RAW um, and um, not everyone is going to shoot in RAW so I'm not going to use the RAW settings in this tutorial but uh, what's cool about shooting in RAW is that you know you have the option to change the ISOs and you have these parameters uh, to affect as well. If you didn't shoot in RAW, if you shot in a compressed format like ProRes or H.264, uh, you won't be able to adjust these settings but um, we're not going to touch that in this tutorial. It's always nice to have these extra settings in the metadata. So um, I think it's really cool. So basically, uh, let's go right to the color chart tab. So right here, we use the color checker to balance out the shot. I'm not going to use it in this tutorial because I have a tutorial on uh, how to use the color checker in DaVinci Resolve. Um, and, I, and I probably think most of you guys watching this video might not have a color checker. Um, but if you don't have one and you're into cinematography and color grading, you need to be sure to have one of these. I, mean, I don't use it for every shot, but uh, when I have time, it can be awesome just to have it uh, to balance colors off of. So this is the X-Rite color checker. It's $70 and I'll have a link in the description for it. And it's not too expensive and it's a great investment. So I highly suggest getting this chart if you're into color grading. But uh, for those of you who do not have it, I'm going to go ahead and jump over. Just We're going to use the uh, built-in LUTs easily and we'll go with that. Since we are not using the color chart, what we can do is we can right click our, uh, our node here and we can go to 3D LUT. And this was shot in uh, black magic film or BDM film. And uh, I want to go ahead and set this to Rec 709. So black magic cinema camera film to Rec 709. And as you see, this gives us a uh, saturated and more contrasted look because this we shot this in more of a log format. And we're now changing it to Rec 709. And the of course, you guys, not everyone's going to shoot on a black magic cinema camera. So it's important to know if you want to go to VFX IO, and you know if you set if you know if you shot an sRGB which is you know a DSLR format uh, you, what you might want to do is uh, you know try to be creative I have a video on you know changing to different LUTs um, but you always want to check out what you shot on and then you can adjust the LUTs from here if you want to go to Rec 709 or whatever so uh, we're going from Blackmagic Cinema Camera Film to Rec 709 and it's a little bit warm and it looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and go up to nodes and click on add serial node and uh, remember the keyboard shortcut because we'll be using that a lot in this tutorial. So uh, basically let's go ahead and maybe uh, balance out our image a little bit more, you know, maybe, uh, you know, brighten it up just by a touch. So what I'll do is maybe go to the left here and raise that up just by a little bit. And a good rule of thumb is to think of lift as you know shadows, gamma as midtones, and gain as highlights. So uh, let's go ahead and maybe raise the gamma up just by a little bit, and uh, maybe go ahead and increase the gain just by uh, a little bit here, maybe 1.15. Oh, it's a little too much. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay, so uh, a little before and after. So help brighten out, brighten up our image just by a little bit, kind of uh, moved up our histogram, and we'll definitely be using scopes a lot in this video. The right way to color grade and correct is by using scopes. Uh, of course, it's a lot about is about uh, seeing what you're doing to your image, but of course, 
Uh, there's rules to follow when you're using scopes. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we move on. So let's go ahead and go create a new node and let's start to kind of grade this out a little bit. I mean, we can consider what we just did our initial correction. Uh, but now we can get into a little bit of grading and uh, making this thing look, uh, you know, beautiful. So uh, what we'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and go to the lift here and bring the lift into the blues a little bit. Um, and as you can see, it kind of fills in the shadows a bit, uh, adds a little bit of blue to the shadows. And then we we'll go to the gamma, and I'll go ahead and set that to the greens a little bit. And this is more of my style. There's not really a correct answer on what to do here. It's really just up to you and experimenting or you know trying to uh, get the look that you want. So I'm gonna go to the gain and maybe up that to the reds, you know, red oranges, just a little bit, not too much. All right, so a little before and after. You know, that kind of helped, uh, you know, add a little bit of uh, interesting color to our image. Not by a lot, but, you know, it's very subtle and it looks good. Um, but right now I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, new node. And um, I'm going to go ahead and maybe go to, well, down here. What you want to do is maybe click on number two here. And let's bring up a new set of parameters here. You know, the color, temperature, and tint. And I want to go ahead and mess with that a little bit. Uh, so... This might be a little bit warmer than what we want to start with. So what I'll do is maybe go to the negative value for temperature. And we'll go ahead and increase that. And a little before and after, as you can see, kind of made our image just a little bit more blue, kind of made more of a white balance. You know, things are looking nice. Um, you know, but I want to go ahead and maybe uh, touch up the tint a little bit. Just to add a little bit, add a little bit more of a purple-ish sort of tint to it when you raise the value up. And that kind of, you know, make the image to where, you know, I want it to be. So we just added a little bit of blue elements in here, but also it kind of helped the skin tones a little bit just by messing with the tint. Um, you know, this feels like more of a balanced image and uh, just some things you want to mess with when you're trying to create a great, cool look. So the one thing I'm trying to do is create a very vibrant look because that's my style. And I just want to, you know, make things are, you know, make sure things are balanced. So uh, once we move along here, we can continue to, uh, you know, push out certain colors and just get to experiment with the tools. Let's go ahead and create a new node and let's go up to nodes and add new layer node. And what I want to do with this setup is to basically add saturation to this image, but not really affect the uh, skin tones of our actresses. So let's, what we'll do is we'll basically go make sure 07 is clicked on our new layer node here and let's go ahead and click on the skin tones of our actress's face and if we hit shift h on our keyboard that'll bring up what we have selected and we can kind of maybe increase the width by a little bit um and maybe uh you know maybe a little bit more and then we can kind of go to the blur radius you know and uh you know increase that by a little bit and then uh maybe increase the clip black by a touch and maybe not so much, uh, but you know, that's okay. So then I'll go ahead and hit shift H again, and that will kind of uh, take away what we have selected. Then let's go to the uh, 05 node, and uh, let's go ahead and increase the color boost. And that will kind of, you know, saturate the entire image and kind of leave them unaffected. And it's very subtle, but if I delete the uh, 07 node, as you can see, they become more saturated. So uh, this is a way to kind of affect the image and cut out certain parts of the image where you don't want to uh, have, you know, affected. So it's pretty cool. And one thing I want to do is go back to Node 05 and um, go ahead and increase the mid-tone detail. So uh, if you have ever used Clarity in Lightroom or uh, Camera Raw in Photoshop, this is basically very similar to it. You know, it basically sharpens the image. Um, it's not exactly the same as clarity. It's not as intense, but it's a good way to sharpen the image and, um, you know, kind of helps bring more focus into what you already have in focus in your shot. So a little before and after, you know, things are a little bit more sharp. It looks nice. You know, things are coming together. So this is, we're just on node, you know, the first, you know, seven nodes here. What we can do now is add a new serial node and let's go to our curves over here and make sure that we're under the hue versus sat. Okay, so there's a few points down here, and let's go ahead and click on all the color points right here. And as you can see, it kind of adds uh, a little bit of a few points right here in our shop. So uh, what we can do is say we want to saturate the greens in this shot. We can bring this up, and as you can see, the wine bottle got a little bit more saturated because it is uh, green. And it's very subtle, but it's there, I promise. 
And maybe we can go ahead and increase the yellows a little bit because I want a vibrant, you know, a warm, vibrant feel to this image right now. And uh, let's go ahead and maybe bring down the reds a little bit so, you know, their skin tones can kind of look a little bit natural. You know, not feeling like, uh, you know, I don't want to make them look like tomatoes or oranges. But, you know, it looks pretty good. And uh, so what we can do now since, we, you know, we kind of did this, let's uh, go ahead and create a uh, new node. And let's also create a new layer node. And uh, basically, you know, what I want to do in this one is basically select the background and really bring that out. Because it's just, you know, there's it, nothing special going on, you know, in the wood in the background here. It's kind of bring those colors to life. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the quantifier, make sure the picker is selected. And let's go ahead and just kind of click on, you know, the wood here. And if we hit Shift H, see what we have selected and it's a mess it's a complete disaster so let's go ahead and click on the selection range tool the plus tool which is right here and let's kind of click on a grayed out area which is basically a part of our background and kind of add these elements back into our image so this is a good start we have a little bit of work to do because i don't really want their hair selected you know her skin tones are selected you know but for the most part you know i got the wood you know selected and that's fine so what we're going to do, we're going to do a little bit of refining and a little bit of masking. So let's go ahead and kind of close down the width. And I think the majority of our colors is basically uh, right here. So we can really close this down because we don't want the green selected as much. And let's, yeah, let's not be afraid to close that down. All right, so we've really closed on the width. And let's kind of move this uh, you know graph over a little bit and by using the center. And let's kind of position this. Maybe we'll even uh, close up the width a little bit more. And let's. And we're looking pretty good. Maybe we'll increase the soft by a little bit. And uh, you know, maybe we'll even close down the width some more. You know, uh, you know, just trying to make sure. You know, I'm a little bit perfectionist here, so that's fine. And then maybe increase the blur radius by a few points. And that's looking just fine. So. There's some hair here that I don't really want selected, some skin tones. You know, I don't really want that selected. So what I can do is go to our uh, mask over here, which is basically this, uh, you know, window, uh, mask window. So what we can do is we can click on this little curved graph here. And basically it gives us the pen tool. And what we can do is maybe like kind of select around our you know actress the areas that we don't want to have affected which is basically our entire actress and uh, we'll kind of go here and just select everything around our talent it doesn't have to be perfect but you know we want to just be close as we can get it and then we'll close it up and so now we have a mask around our talent here and what we can do is click on this little window here which will basically invert it so now she's completely grayed out but we don't want to leave it at that. We want to increase the soft by a little bit. So, you know, it's not a hard edge. It's just, you know, feathers things out. It looks nice. It blends together. So increase that by a little bit. Okay, and I'm not sure if I really care about her hair. But uh, just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to move on to that one. What we'll do is we'll go to the tracker window here. And make sure, you know, the mask is highlighted. And we hit this play button. And this will basically analyze the clip track forward so this mask will basically track with our actress here all the way through to the end of the clip so it's really awesome you don't have to set up any points it just does it so i'm going to kind of cut it off here since it's just a tutorial and we don't need to have it uh you know tracking the entire time so now if we go ahead and maybe turn this off uh we can kind of go ahead and uh start saturating the background so we can go here and uh, maybe go to the gain here and just crease the, uh, you know, the reds a bit. So now a little before and after, and you know, things are looking pretty good that we just punched out the background by a lot. So now let's kind of move on to another note and this is a serial note. And I want to show you guys just how to sharpen an image if you know you want it, if, it's, if your shot's a little bit soft, this image doesn't need to be sharpened. But what you can do is basically under the uh, sharpen tab here, the blur tab, uh, you can go to the radius and just bring that down, and that will kind of make the image pop a little bit. Now this image doesn't need it. I don't need to bring out the grain any more than it needs to be, you know, brought out already. So I'm not going to go ahead and use that for this image. But I'm just showing you guys how you can do that if you're interested in sharpening your image. 
So I'm going to turn that off since we don't need it. And uh, basically, let's see what we're at. Uh, so uh, maybe what we can do is create another node, and I'll show you another cool uh, you know, window in here. And it is the Luma versus Sat window. And basically, what we can do is click these points down here. And this will sh uh, saturate pixels that are in the shadows or the highlights. And it's really awesome. So maybe I want to go ahead and saturate some of the shadow information a little bit. And it's very subtle, but you guys, you can see the uh, blues and the greens in this wood kind of came out a little bit. You know, it's really cool. Maybe I'll go ahead and increase this just by a little bit as well. And this has just a little bit more, you know, saturation to our shot. And things are looking, you know, it's just cool. You know, I like color. So let's go ahead and create another node. And uh, let's go ahead and really get stylistic with the grade here. And a technique to, uh, that I like to do is go to our regular curves here and make sure to select, you know, one channel, which is the red channel. We'll start with that one. And I want to create S curves for each of these channels and kind of mess around to see what kind of grade that we can get. You can get some interesting looks with this. Um, you know, uh, I like messing with it. Just well, bear with me here for a second. We'll kind of go to each channel and kind of, you know, create a little bit of separation from each channel. So... Uh, we can get some cool ideas and, uh, you know, create some awesome looks this way. You know, letting the uh, power of DaVinci Resolve create the art for you. You know, something to mess around with. So maybe we'll go back to the red channel and kind of bring down the uh, shadows, the reds, and I'll kind of bring out the blues a little bit more. So this is before, and now this is, you know, after. I definitely like it. Maybe what I'll do is maybe I'll bring down the red channel just a little bit on the highlights. And maybe I'll go to the greens as well and maybe bring that down just a little bit as well. But very subtle. You know, I think it's really cool. Very interesting. So so if we take a look at our scopes here, we see that we are clipping a little bit of information here and we have some blown out uh, details. So basically the light bulbs are blown out, which is okay. It's not a big deal that they're blown out. I mean, depending on who you're working for and the type of person you are. Um, and uh, let's see, this is a little bit clipped, it looks like. And... You know, there might be some clipped information here. And if you're working for, you know, a cinematographer or, you know, uh, you know a director that wants to go after that film look, if you will, uh, basically you don't want to have any uh, blown, you know, blown out uh, parts of your video and you definitely don't want any clip it, uh, parts of your video. So what we can do to quickly fix that so we can get that done, go ahead and create a new serial node. And right here underneath the soft clip and under the curves window, uh, we can go here and where it says uh, low soft, we can increase that by a little bit. And as you can see, uh, you know, our waveform and histogram moves up and, you know, the shadows, you know, are becoming, you know, exposed a little bit. We can see some detail in there and it's not clipped anymore. And then once again, we can maybe, uh, maybe bring down the high a little bit. And as you see, the uh, highlights are brought in a little bit. And if we turn this node off, um, there's no difference. You can't see any difference in the midtones. Just you know, very subtleties in you know the highlights here or the blown out parts and the clip parts. So that's really cool, and that's really how you can get the film look. Because you know, if you don't know, uh, old film you know would always kind of you know or not old film, but film curves out at you know around you know zero IRE, so it won't exactly be pure black. And it will, you know, curve out right before 100 IRE, so it won't be pure white. So that's really what's cool about film, and you can easily control that in DaVinci Resolve if you want to say, hey, I got the film look. So let's go ahead and create a new node, and I'm going to show you guys how to create a vignette real fast if you don't know how to do it. Uh, so we'll go back to our window here. We'll click on the circle mask, and we'll zoom out here, and we'll drag this up, and we'll go ahead and maybe stretch this out a little bit more, and I may have stretched drag that up a little too much so I'll bring it down okay and then let's go ahead and increase the uh, soft by a little bit so we have this very nice soft vignette and let's go ahead and invert the mask okay and let's go ahead to uh, the offset and bring that down and our edges of our shot will be uh, you know vignetted and things will look very nice if I create a new node, get rid of that. So a little before and after, you know, it looks really good. You know, um, personally, I like the look of our skin tones here. If we check out the vector scope real fast, um, you know, it looks like everything's kind of on that skin tone line. If we, you know, you can go here to the settings and just click on show skin tone indicator. 
And what I can do here is maybe go to their quantifier and make sure that's selected and click on or, you know, our skin tones here. And hit Shift H to bring up our highlights. And it's pretty close. It's not exactly on the line, you know, but I'm not going to complain. I like the look that we have. You know, some of you might not, but, uh, you know, if you want to go ahead and adjust this, you can just mess with the wheels here and you can kind of get that on the line if you want to have natural skin tones or for whatever you're trying to do. So that's how you can do that. And let me turn that off. Boom. So I think it is a really cool image and I hope uh, you've, you've learned a few things from this tutorial. This is basically a lot of the tools here in DaVinci Resolve. I haven't gone through everything, but if you're new to color grading or whatever, you now have access to pretty much, you know, everything you need to do a proper grade. And I have a few videos, you know, that are more, you know, that go in depth and other things. So those links will be at the end of this video and also in the description of the video. So be sure to check those out. And I definitely plan on doing maybe a more in-depth tutorial where I talk about more of the, you know, technical settings of DaVinci Resolve. So I think this was a great tutorial. I'm very happy to do it. I love DaVinci Resolve. I love color grading. So if you guys are new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more tutorials uh, for filmmaking and uh, color grading. And if you guys enjoyed the video, if it's helped you, please drop a like. It helps me out tremendously. And if you have any questions, please drop a comment down below or hit me up on my social media links. Those links are in the description of the video. And guys, thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you soon.